The finest television news cast in the entire Southwest. The pros on Five Alive. From the Five Alive News Center, Oklahoma's news professionals, Ron Gardner, Mary Carr, Brent Franks, Dick Pryor. This is Five Alive News. If you're one of the 60,000 people who drive I-40 between May and Western every day, get ready for some changes. Tomorrow, the Transportation Department begins a 10-month, $5.3 million bridge repair project. It means over the next few days, you'll see the eastbound ramps onto I-40 from I-44 closed. Most other ramps on and off I-40 between May and Western will also be closed. And it... and I concerns a union vote. I'm Dan Slocan. And I'm Donna Gregory. Workers of the Oklahoma City Scrivener Corporation overwhelmingly rejected a contract offer today and did not rule out the possibility of a strike. But both sides say they will go back to the bargaining table. News source Marty Griffin has been following that story. He's in our newsroom with a report. Marty? Donna, more than 300 Scrivener employees voted at Teamsters headquarters this morning. Less than 15... Claimed the life of an Oklahoma City man. Fire Chief John Hansen says fire officials received the call ab about a fire at a boarding house on West California around 5.30 this morning. It appears a man in his 50s was smoking in bed when his mattress caught on fire. The man died of smoke inhalation. Damage from the fire is estimated to be around $350. Oklahoma City police this afternoon are still looking for the person who left a newborn baby girl to die in a trash dumpster. That tragic discovery was made yesterday at an apartment complex on the city's south side. Ben Kerr found the infant while taking his morning walk. He had stopped to look inside a dumpster for aluminum cans when he found the baby in a cardboard box. Police say the baby was abandoned within 24 hours of its birth. The medical examiner will perform an autopsy to find out the exact cause of death, but it appears the baby did not suffer any trauma. Police are canvassing apartment complexes in that area, trying to find a woman who was recently pregnant. If you have any clues, you're urged to call the Oklahoma City Police. Meantime, Oklahoma City Police this afternoon have a suspect in custody in connection with yet another murder case. As we told you yesterday, a man was shot to death at the Zodiac Club on North Sooner Road. It happened around 3 yesterday morning. 22-year-old Tony Davis was pronounced dead on arrival at Oklahoma Memorial Hospital. Witnesses had told police they saw a man shoot Davis in the chest. The suspect is 19 years old. The 911 emergency telephone system has one more hurdle to clear before it becomes a part of the greater Oklahoma City metropolitan area. This Tuesday, voters are asked to turn out for elections in 13 communities. Nichols Hills is one of those cities voting on 911. The emergency system would allow quick and easy access to police, fire, and ambulance services. The extra cost, 65 cents a month for the first year, 39 cents each additional year. 911 promoters are optimistic voters will approve of the system. This is an extremely important thing for the entire metropolitan area, and it's really critical that we're in this together 100%. Uh, if those uh, areas choose not to go with us on this, it's not only going to reflect on them and be a negative thing for their community, it will be for the whole area. Because there is one possible trouble spot. Piedmont only has the 911 issue on their ballot. And there's concern the turnout there will be light. If 911 is approved, it will take two years to install the system. Tulsa evangelist Oral Roberts says his wealthy lifestyle is the reward God gives to believers. Roberts spoke at a dedication for a $15 million church in Rockwall, Texas this morning, his first public appearance since he went into his prayer tower at ORU, saying God would take his life if he didn't raise $8 million by April 1st. Today, Roberts told his audience, God designed for you to live in the overflow. He also said he collected a $400,000 overflow from his prayer tower fundraising effort. Coming up on Five Alive News, getting kids to say nope to dope and a look at a symposium with that in mind. We'll begin a two-part series on individual retirement accounts with a look at how tax reforms are changing the IRA deduction. The best boneless ham for Easter is a Hormel Cure 81, and the best price is at IGA, just $2.69 a pound this week. America's favorite cookies are Nabisco Oreos and Double Stuff. Your choice, each 20-ounce package is only $1.89 at IGA. 
Stock up on soft and gentle bath tissue at this super IGA price. This week, each four-roll package is just 69 cents. IGA does what you want. Park Suite Hotel presents Sweet Beginnings, a wonderful way to begin your honeymoon or celebrate your anniversary. Sweet Beginnings starts with a romantic night for two in one of our plush suites. A long stem red rose and chilled champagne to greet you. Next, fresh strawberries and fine chocolates to savor. Then a bountiful dinner buffet or lunch for two in the atrium. And finally, a complimentary breakfast in the morning. All for just $94.95 a couple. Sweet Beginnings, only at the Park Suite Hotel. I'm David Terrell with Terrell Remodeling, Oklahoma's leading remodeling company. Bring the outdoors inside with our fabulous Sunshine Room Edition. Increase the value of your home or business with a customized year-round sunshine room that keeps the weather outside. And new siding by Terrell's can make your home new again and save you hundreds of energy dollars. Plus, Terrell's insulated vinyl windows tilt in for easy cleaning. America's finest window at a price you can afford. So call Terrell's now and save. Terrell Remodeling, building a better Oklahoma. 799-7700. Where do you turn when your child is ill? You want the best medical care available. Someone who knows the special needs of children. The pediatricians at the Oklahoma City Clinic treat every child as if he or she were their very own. For illness or routine exams and vaccinations, the Oklahoma City Clinic helps make your child well again. The Oklahoma City Clinic is for kids too. The Oklahoma City Clinic, Midwest City Medical Center, Yukon Medical Center, and Edmond Medical Center. Over 2,500 students from the surrounding area will be gathering in Oklahoma City on Tuesday. At issue is drug use. The Oklahoma Alliance Against Drugs is sponsoring the symposium designed to discourage youngsters from using illegal drugs. Joining us now in our newsroom is Don Newport. He's a member of the Alliance's planning committee and president of Oklahoma City Community College. Mr. Newport, first of all, this symposium, as I understand it, is, is called to know is to say no. What message are you hoping the kids are going to get from that? Well, I think the message is really very straightforward. We've seen the problems uh, of taking the other course of trying to change behavior after someone's been hooked. What this program is designed to do is try to provide some basic information before a young person is hooked so that they can make the decision a conscious one, uh, Ron. What kind of things will the students be participating in to learn about the dangers of drugs? Well, the symposium is designed as a kickoff event for the Alliance uh, so that we'll have uh, both uh, young and older folks there, uh, young people looking at uh, drugs uh, from the standpoint of, of not needing them and being successful, young people who have chosen, uh, if you will, at, at early ages to get hooked, and then some of the challenges of, of coming back out of the bottom of that pit. And then we'll have some real experts uh, involved in the program uh, that can bring us a national perspective. So these kids, this is not just going to be a one-day seminar and then it's over. They'll be using this for several months to come. No, Ron, it, it certainly is not a one-day uh, event. Uh, this summer, we'll be bringing about 150 to 200 of these young people together uh, to initiate a training program to see them as advocates going back into their schools. And then later on this fall, we'll have a very large event involving some 5,000 young people uh, as picking up on those uh, teen clubs that we'll be starting. And you have targeted grades 7 through 10, is that correct? Why, why this group? It appears to us that grades 7 and 8 are really critical decision points, uh, Mary, uh, and we're wanting to involve those young people and then, of course, the older young people as good peer models uh, for the younger uh, students. Okay, Mr. Newport, thank you very much for joining us and good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> The deadline is fast approaching to get your 1986 income tax forms in. You have about 10 days to do that. For those of you who are already thinking about next year, tax reform is changing a lot of rules for deductions. One example is the individual retirement account. Some tax advantages have been taken away, but as Five Alive's Carol Cross reports, 1987 IRAs may still be a wise investment. He has a special advantage in planning for its financial future. David is a CPA and knows how to react to tax reform. He is one of 28 million taxpayers who will no longer be eligible to deduct a contribution to his individual retirement account because he makes over the $35,000 limit. But he will still contribute because the interest earned is tax deferred. You would not be paying tax on, on the income until such time as you withdrew it out many years later. For the time being, that tax money stays in your account, earning even more interest. Say you contribute $2,000 a year to your IRA for 30 years. You are in the 28% tax bracket and earn an average of 10% off your IRA deposit. 
you will end up with $182,643 after taxes. If you were to put that same money into an investment where earnings are taxed every year, you would only earn $141,017. That is a difference of almost $42,000. So what does David Zaslow tell his clients? If they have no other source or use of the funds, uh, I would still advise them to put the funds into an IRA account, again, so that the income is tax deferred. But the difference is less dramatic for shorter term IRAs. Using the same figures for a 20 year stretch, there is only a $7,000 difference between a regular investment and the tax deferred IRA. So the benefits of the tax deferred feature diminish the closer you are to retirement. So if you're 20, 15, or even just 10 years away from retirement, a tax deferred IRA might be better than no IRA at all because IRAs are considered long-term investments and they tend to have better rates of return than other investments. So remember what one expert is doing to help his family plan for retirement. The IRA is one of the few good tax shelters left where earnings add up more quickly than most other investments. I'm Carol Krauss. Just ahead on Five Alive News, the sky is a touch of gray over Oklahoma City this afternoon. Fred Norman will let us know what those gray skies may do tomorrow in the weather forecast when we come back. To make your mouth water. Red Lobster brings you our shrimp festival. Make your spirits fly. Eleven shrimp specials the way we know you love them. Starting at six ninety-five. Make you flip with every tip of every shrimp you try. From our sizzling shrimp scampi to shrimp and lobster to our huge shrimp feast. Now at the shrimp festival. Only at Red Lobster. We know how you love seafood. At Waterbed Outlet, get low, low outlet prices and get rid of those IRS blues. With 90 days same as cash, you can use your income tax refund now. Waterbed Outlet has top quality waterbeds, accessories, and bedroom furniture all at outlet prices. And Waterbed Outlet takes trade-ins too, so call us. Save 20, 30, even 50% at Waterbed Outlet, both outlet malls and 402 North Rockwell. Get it now. Wow. Folks around here say there's no better deal on a new Ford than an Oklahoma Country Ford deal. My Country Ford dealer pays the factory the same price for new cars and trucks as the big city boys, but his overhead is lower. That means I get just as good a deal, even better, because I'm doing business with someone I know, someone I can trust, someone who will treat me right every time. Your Oklahoma Country Ford dealer. Quality people, quality products. Spring forward, fall back. It's daylight savings time, or is it? It wasn't for the folks at Henderson Hills Baptist Church until this afternoon. They decided to stay on standard time until after this morning services to prevent confusion, but some folks still seemed a little mixed up. Well, it's supposed to start at 11 o'clock, but since it's daylight savings time, it's 12 o'clock. So that means we'll get out at 1.30. <laughs> Got it? No. <laughs> uh, my stomach says it's still 11 o'clock, but I'm not sure. <laughs> The church pastor says attendance was traditionally down on daylight savings time Sundays. He says the church will continue to do things its own way for a little while. I love it. Good enough. My stomach is always a barometer of time here. And that doesn't change very readily no, either. No, that's always the same. What's it going to be like tomorrow? Tomorrow, well, not a whole lot different than today. Gray skies, a little bit of rain, but just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for tonight. In fact, we'll show you some on the radar in just a moment. But none of it is very heavy as far as Oklahoma goes. So although there's a lot of weather west of us, a lot of weather east of us, once again, we're just going to get tapped lightly. Let's see what we're doing out there right now. And the skies are quite cloudy. And currently, we've got just 54 degrees. And we have probably gotten up about as high as we will today. We may have hit 55 or so officially. Northwest at 10 still, that's part of the reason. And we're going to continue to still have the northerly winds for another 36 hours. Humidity 27% and the pressure is falling. Now, as far as our morning lows go, we wound up with just about everyone in the 30s, except 
good old Bartlesville came through briefly with 28, and we didn't get the reading from Guyman this morning, so I'm not sure what they had. And then we did hold out with some 40s here in the southwest because that's where the cloud cover was. Now we see what temperatures have jumped to, and they're still in the 40s. They're getting a little bit of light rain in that area, and there has been a little tiny bit dancing north and west of Oklahoma City up near Enid, but very, very light and spotty, probably not hardly even measurable. Down here, I doubt if anyone's hardly gotten a tenth of an inch. And then off to the east of us, the clouds didn't come in quite that far, and we wound up with temperatures getting well up into the 60s, and you go over to the Arkansas border, Fort Smith went all the way up to 65 degrees. Oklahoma City's 54 is about as high as we've officially seen so far. Now let's take a look at that EarthScan satellite picture, and there you see the cloud in is spreading in from the west and ending across the eastern part of the state, and quite a bit of it on up into Colorado and back into New Mexico. Travelers advisories are still out. Several areas within the last six hours have had an inch of new snow, and there's still a good bit there, a little bit on the ground even in Arizona, and quite a bit still in Colorado. Then we hit the clear area in between. Now that whole mass is going to move this way, but as it does so, it's going to die out. So it's a complex picture, but I think we'll get tapped lightly tonight, get tapped lightly tomorrow. Be a little dreary both days, but quite mild nevertheless. Off to the east of us, whole different story. That storm's still wrapped up, as you can see, and they're still getting snows in Virginia. Some areas now have 27 to 35 inches of snow. All kinds of traveling problems in that area, up in the mountains only, and the Catskills too. And you can see how it all wraps around there very tightly. There's our storm center still moving out.